and welcome back to my channel. I'm Grace on tour and I love to showcase the beautiful world that we live in. And in this video, I realized that we are soon approaching the half mark goal of visiting every country in the world and thought it was a good time to sit down and kind of reflect on the destinations where I've been to uh, through this channel. So I'm going to point out some of my favorite destinations based on a number of different themes. Uh, but before we head out there, remember to like this video and subscribe. There are new travel videos every week and I really appreciate your support. But for now, let's travel back in time and explore our favorite destinations again. The first theme that I have is solo travel. If you are a frequent watcher of this channel, you will know that I do quite a bit of solo travel. A majority of my trips I do on my own. And uh, there are some places which I find are more easier to navigate solo. And also if you're kind of new to solo travel, I would recommend these places. So first one up is like a given Southeast Asia because it's relatively affordable, it's easy to get around and majority of people speak English. So that is really great. And yeah, within Southeast Asia, some great solo destinations are of course, Indonesia, the Philippines, Thailand, Vietnam, Cambodia, so on. Then we have Europe and kind of same aspect as in Asia. However, of course it's not as affordable and you maybe have to rough it a bit uh, in order to keep the budget down in Europe. But getting around Europe is so easy and you have around 50 countries on the continent. You can be in one country in the morning, uh, another country for lunch and then another country for dinner. It's really uh, a great place to be able to see a lot of countries. And same thing here, transportation is good. People speak English in especially Western Europe, just a really diverse and a lot of things to see and do. And then the last one for solo travel is Peru. I went to Peru back in 2019 after I had graduated from university and I found that out of all of the South American countries, Peru was I think most easy for solo travelers. More people speak English in Peru than in other countries I found in South America and very cheap and affordable and also good uh, transportation. I can recommend uh, something called Peru Hop, which is an easy and affordable way to get around the country to the most famous spots. So that's a little tip for you. Next point is cities. And I'm just going to list a bunch of cities which I find very fun, exciting, and has a lot to offer. Of course, the first one is Hong Kong. It is where I live right now. And I must say that Hong Kong has a lot to offer. It's a very bustling city, but you also have the beautiful nature and yeah, lots of things to see and do. And then we have Marrakesh. Me and my mom went there back in 2018 on a uh, weekend trip we stayed in the the old souks area we just spent our days walking around the old bazaars and sp sipping <laughs> mint tea on uh, rooftops overlooking the city so then we have paris i think my favorite city in europe it's just something very magical about the eiffel tower sparkling at night all the beautiful old buildings. Really love Paris. Then we also have Budapest. And this is a city that many people when they're traveling Europe might not consider, but I found it to be also very affordable. Also lots of things to see and do. They have the hot thermal bathhouses, uh, which are really fun to explore. Me and my dad went there also on a weekend trip and had a really great time. And then we have uh, La Paz. La Paz is a very unique city because it's essentially located in this kind of a hole <laughs> where the city is all around. And the way to get around or their public form of public transportation system is the cable cars. So if you want to get from one point of the city to the other, you take the cable car, which is a really special thing. And um, you have the colitas, I believe, the p people wearing the traditional clothes and yeah. I just really like the capital city of Bolivia. And then we also have Rio. Going to Rio was a really big dream for me, especially after watching the film Rio, the animated bird movie. But it was something when I saw that movie of the colorful city with 
the high mountains meeting the blue ocean. Yeah, Rio did not disappoint. It was a really beautiful, colorful city. And I think one of my favorite cities, uh, South America. And the final city is Taipei. I also lived in Taiwan for a while back in 2018. I must say that Taipei has really a lot to offer as well. One of the best things I think when you go to Taipei is to definitely check out the night markets. There you can do spend the whole night and there's lots of things to see and do and of course loads of really delicious street food. Then we go into more nature side so I have listed the best mountain areas and first one is the Usambara mountains in Tanzania and of course, if you go to Tanzania and want to do a really challenging hike, you can of course climb Mount Kilimanjaro. But from the Usambara Mountains, you can also spot Kilimanjaro. It's a very green, lush area. And as you can imagine, it's much cooler than down on the savannah area. Next one is Gudauri in Georgia. Great place for skiing. And thinking of Europe, it's a lot more affordable skiing area. I would say as beautiful as the, the Alps, but uh, yeah, really great spot. And then, of course, Machu Picchu in Peru, um, an iconic mountain spot, but definitely worth visiting. And travel is, of course, nothing without some adventure. So this part is the best adventures that I've had <laughs> during these trips. First one is safari in Africa. I don't think it matters really which African country you are in. The safari on the continent is amazing and it's truly something magical and special. And I think also what really enhanced the experience was camping in the savannah, <laughs> where you would have a bonfire at night, hear uh, the hyenas in the background and then go to bed in your tent and here are the animals outside <laughs> and one morning I woke up and there was a hippo outside of the tent and also I would say the African sunsets are the most beautiful sunsets that you can experience and just seeing the wildlife so close and being in it is really amazing so if you ever get the opportunity to go on a safari definitely do it <laughs> and then next one is paragliding in Nepal this was my second time paragliding and I'd never done a um, takeoff where you just run out of the, from the mountain and go. It was a definitely adrenal rush, but I was very scared. But seeing Pokhara in Nepal from above and seeing the Everest mountain chain while flying in the air with just a parachute was really, really magical. Next one is volcano boarding in Nicaragua. And what was really funny about this was as well that the mount, that the volcano was actually active. So we were like digging some holes in the volcano and you could feel the heat. And yeah, we all looked like big minions um, sliding down this volcano in Nicaragua, but it was such a fun experience. And then I would say as well, kind of linking this, uh, I think snow adventures in general in Sweden, I'm from Sweden, so growing up, of course, there was a lot of winter activities. There's so much things that you can do out in the snow, sledging, skiing, skating, snowmobiling. Yeah, there's lots of things you can do and really fun and very beautiful if you are in a place with a lot of snow and ice. Then I would say as well, floating in the Dead Sea. It was an experience which I cannot really even explain, but yeah, going in a body of water and not being able to keep your feet down where you just brought up to the surface the whole time was also a really really interesting experience and also diving seeing wildlife under the sea can you can best do that by diving of course it's also something very magical to being in it all of the wildlife under the sea and then I also have moped adventures in the Philippines or moped adventures in Southeast Asia, I would generally say, or moped adventures anywhere <laughs> because it's also you're part of the local life in some sense and you get to see and take in the scenery a lot more and a lot of things can go wrong on a scooter, but <laughs> it's also really, really fun. And I think the last kind of experience or adventure 
part is going to India because for me uh, going to India back in 2017 which was my first time it was so different from anything I'd ever experienced before and it really showed me how diverse our world is and there's so much to see experience and do and I think if you are from any part of the Western world, going to India will really open up your eyes and is really something different but so beautiful and I think an experience that everyone should, should have. Then I also listed the best lakes. <laughs> First one is Lake Malawi. It's the second largest lake in Africa and it is famous for having a very deadly parasite in it so you shouldn't be swimming in the lake however it's still a really cool experience going there because it's such a huge body of water which it looks and feels like the ocean but it's not and then I would say the seven Rila lakes in Bulgaria it's a beautiful hike and these lakes are located on top of a mountain chain and really really beautiful also Lake Titicaca in Peru, Bolivia. Also very unique experience and you can go on a, a boat trip and also see how the locals are living on the lake. Last one is Lake Bled in Slovenia. I think it's a very famous and iconic lake, but it truly is very beautiful, uh, I must say. We are a approaching the end. We have two more categories and the next one is the best islands. <laughs> I think I have some kind of fashion fascination of islands. I love the ocean and water, so being on a beach or by the sea always makes me happy. First one I would actually say is Iceland. It's an island which has so much to offer. Uh, an island and a country. You have everything from volcanoes, glaciers, geysers, hot natural pools. Fuerteventura in Spain, the Spanish island. It's also very beautiful nature and landscape. It's a volcanic island, so you also have volcanoes to hike, beautiful, long, deserted beaches. Then I would say Belle-Ile in France, in Brittany. It's a very beautiful island, which actually a lot of famous artists have resided in, just driving around the island, finding lighthouses, small coves to go swimming in. Yeah, it's a really nice spot. Nusa Penida in Indonesia. It is now a very famous and popular tourist destination, especially for people going to Bali. However, I still must say that it is a truly magical and beautiful spot um, where you have, well, my favorite place is the dinosaur spot <laughs> where the mountain looks like the dinosaur and then you have the blue ocean with like mandarins swimming. Also Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka is a very diverse island. Uh, you have wildlife uh, with the national parks, you have beaches, surfing, cities, mountains. So also Sri Lanka has really lots of stuff. And then I would say also the Maldives. One perception that people have is that going to the Maldives is expensive, but you can actually do it on a budget. So me and my family, we went there back in 2017 and we actually stayed on a local island. So we took the local ferry and we stayed in a local hotel on a local island. So it was not a resort or anything like that, but we still had the beautiful ocean, white sand and experience that anyone else staying on a resort island would have but playing like a tenth of the price. <laughs> so just know that you can actually go to the Maldives affordably. Last part of the islands, I would say actually the Swedish islands. So, so you have Öland and Gotland. It's the largest and the second largest island in Sweden. And they are located in the Baltic Sea. Also just nice to drive around these islands and find uh, really beautiful spots. The last and final part of this best of video is the best remote places and I think this is my favorite category because I think the more I travel the more I get excited about remote places on this planet which are not as discovered and which are not particularly tourist destinations. First one is I think one of the most beautiful places I've ever seen in this world. <laughs> it's Socotra Island in Yemen. 
it, I can't really explain the magic of this island. Everything from the unique nature that they have, like the bottle trees, the dragon trees, the sand dunes, the dolphins, the sea, the sunrises, the sunsets, the clear starry skies. And also because it's so remote, um, they don't have mass tourism. We were camping the whole time, so you're really part of nature. And it was truly, truly an amazing place. <laughs> and then we have Tokashiki, which is part of the Okinawa Islands in Japan. And Tokashiki was also a very local island and very beautiful, not a lot of tourists and yeah, kind of a, a local island of Okinawa, which I really enjoyed. Uh, then we have Myanmar. Uh, of course, right now, the situation is not great, uh, but I was there for Christmas 2018. And it was such a beautiful country with very kind people and beautiful temples and yeah, very a lot to offer and I had a really great time there, so it was also a special place. Then I will also say Lebanon. I think it's getting more popular now, um, but um, when I went there it was a economic crisis and just after the pandemic uh, they were struggling a lot, but however I must say it was a beautiful country, amazing food and really kind people and yeah, it had a lot more to offer than I expected it to have, so yeah. And then I would also say Honduras and El Salvador uh, in Central America. I think many people would maybe not consider going there um, on different aspects and factors, but yeah, I really enjoyed both of those places um, and yeah, Palau. <laughs> that was also another remote place which was not very easy to get to but once you get there it's so beautiful and i think anyone who goes there should explore the the sea life so getting out on a boat diving snorkeling um, that is the best thing that palau has to offer and the last remote this nation is Bhutan. So this was very recently I went to Bhutan. It's also a very, very special place where it feels in one aspect that time has stopped because you walk around and most of the people are wearing the traditional clothes, living their lives in very traditional ways. And also nature is very beautiful, very friendly people. And as it's quite hard to get to and expensive, it's also not many people that go there they, or they don't get any mass tourism in Bhutan, so to say. So that was also a very special trip. So yeah, that was a rundown of the best destinations that we have experienced together on this channel uh, thus far. And I am truly excited for the coming years and bringing you along to the rest of the countries that we have um, yet to explore and I'm really excited for the coming months because we will be going to some really really interesting destinations and I can't wait to bring you along so thank you so much for watching and for your continued support on this channel remember to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one bye